General Louis DeJoy made some dramatic changes to the U.S. Postal Service. Many questions were asked about the timing. Those changes are now being reversed. So here to talk about what is next is U.S. Representative Carolyn Maloney. She's also the chair of the House chair. Oversight Committee, which called for DeJoy to testify on Monday in an emergency hearing. Good morning, Congresswoman. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dan. Well, as you know, we will be voting this Saturday. It is a, a really unusual situation, but the speaker has called all of us back to vote to fund the $25 billion that the Board of Governors has said the post office needs just to make up right. for the losses from the coronavirus and also to pass my bill, Delivering for America, that would uh, would restore the services as they were and stop the, the changes that J DeJoy has made. On Monday, we will be having uh, he a hearing with him. On Friday, the Senate will have right. a hearing with DeJoy. So, so let me get into some of the things about the Delivering for America Act, because you want to prohibit the Postal Service from implementing any changes to the operations until January, right? Some of those changes already were made in terms of post, post office machines being dismantled, sorting machines being dismantled, mailboxes being removed from the streets. Postmaster General Louis, Louis DeJoy says that he's halting that for now. But what about the changes that were already made? Will they be put back? Yes, we want to restore those uh, mailboxes he's removed. He's removed uh, machinery from uh, postal uh, processing centers, including here in New York, that speed up the delivery uh, and sorting of mail. We need to put it back. We, we're going to have probably the largest amount of people in history voting by mail because of the coronavirus. Uh, this election that's coming up, we need more services. He's reversing his action that called for no overtime. What if you have a huge surge of mail and you need more workers? You need that flexibility. He has also stopped uh, mail trucks from uh, leaving from the processing centers, uh, right. limiting, limiting them to one run a day. I've got reports from union leaders that it is backed up uh, five to six days already, the mail in New York City. So when he says that he's suspending those until after the election, after 11-3, that means moving forward. So what are you hoping to gain from him when you speak with him on Monday at this hearing? Are you looking to press him on these issues of restoring the things that were already removed to make sure that all the things you just talked about are up and running on Election Day? And his decision in the first place. Uh, I sent him, along with several other uh, Democratic leaders, a 10-page letter. It's up on my website outlining the changes he's proposed, asking questions on what rationale did he move forward with these changes in the middle of a pandemic, right. the worst in my lifetime, and, and right before an extremely important election. Yeah, I saw your letter, and what part of it said it, quote, acted outside of his authority to implement changes and did not follow the law, which brings me to my next question. Who is the watchdog of the U.S. Postal Service? How are so many changes made without some kind of approval process? Well, that is an, exactly the point. Uh, 20 AGs are now suing the federal government over this action uh, where there was no hearing, no, no uh, announcing to Congress or to anyone else what he intended to do. He just did it and, uh, and, and uh, just uh, came out and uh, we got reports when I, I called postal and met with postal officials, they denied that it was happening. Uh, but my office and others were getting letters and reports from across the country that he was uh, uh, shutting down the time that post offices were mm -hmm. operating, sometimes just to two days, so, so reported, and, and taking the mailboxes out of operation, uh, taking machinery uh, that is there to speed up the process uh, out of out of the areas where there's going to be an influx of, of, of huge mail and right. ballots, including New York, taking all these actions without any hearings, without any notice, without any uh, a functioning of government. Just usually we talk to each other. Right. We, usually we hear so, about a problem and we try to work it out. He just went out there and did it. So, and it, and uh, I believe he was trying to sabotage uh, the, the mail and balloting and including last week, as you recall, the President of the United States went on national television said he was opposed to funding because he was opposed to mail-in ballots. We well, also said uh, that I he was that he could be more undemocratic. Yeah, the president also seems to be laser focused on on your re-election, so, saying that there were problems in the mailing system. He keeps focusing on it all. I see the video you posted on your Twitter where he says you're a third-rate congresswoman. And do you want to address some of the issues he talked about with the mail-in issues that New York experienced? 
I, I would say he's trying to uh, get the conversation off of the post office, delivering the mail, uh, taking care of people, and, and trying to focus on my election. Uh, I, I was one of the uh, six chairmen that uh, led the impeachment uh, hearings, uh, which I'm sure he was not happy about. And uh, he's not happy about uh, the actions that I've taken uh, to stop his uh his uh, appointment, it's a political appointment. Right. Uh, Mr. DeJoy is a mega donor to the President of the United States. Understood. Uh, his wife is under consideration to be the ambassador to uh, Canada. And uh, I, along with others, requested an IG investigation after reviewing the material. They have started an IG investigation about his conflicts of interest and investments in competing uh, businesses with the post office. In addition, it's been reported he made a million dollars off the post office Understood. last year. So there are many questions about the president's appointment, the president's action, and whether he is putting the service to the American people first over politics. I am introducing a bill soon to depoliticize the post office. Uh, right. In my lifetime, the postmaster general has always been from the ranks, someone who's a professional, who understands the post office, works in the post office, is very much associated with okay. wanting it to be successful, unlike Mr. DeJoy. We're almost out of time, and I want to get your take on night two of the convention last night. Uh, your cohort in the uh, in, in Congress, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she was given 60 seconds on a taped message. Were you surprised by anything she said? There seems to be some news making that she was, you know, the second nominee for, for Sanders to allow him to try to get some delegates last night. Your thoughts overall on night two and that? Oh, I, I, I thought, um, I, I think that the, it was an incredible convention. I was particularly moved by uh, Jill Biden as a former teacher, being in a classroom, talking about the family of New York and, and supporting it. John Kerry on foreign policy, uh, former President Clinton on leadership uh, and putting the right priorities forward. And Ocasio is a friend of mine. I think she did a very good job. She had the honor of uh, nominating her candidate, Bernie Sanders. Uh, I am nominating with everybody I talk to my candidate, Joe Biden. He is a unifier. He is a leader. He has the experience. He can move this country in the right direction. I am going to work very hard for him, and I hope everybody else does. This is, we always say it, but this really is the most important uh, yes. election of my lifetime. And Joe Biden is the right man for the right reason. We call him Uncle Joe because he comes into New York. He can call New York's uh, uh, airport, LaGuardia, a third-rate uh, airport. Uh, but he doesn't just criticize like a good uncle. He's helped give us the money to restore it and rebuild it. He knows New York. We know him. Uh, he'll be a great leader for this great country and a great leader for New York. All he right. knows our problems and has a history of helping us with them. And we're going to leave it there. Congresswoman Maloney, I appreciate your time this morning, and we'll be looking uh, at that hearing on Monday. Thank you for your time this morning. Okay, thank you.